Hey guys, it's Bert from Soft Tubes again, and we're back with another trailer reaction. And today it is the final trailer for Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Let's jump straight into this. I have heard good things. What we are witnessing here. Oh, okay, yep. Is the return. Oh, they really of like things. using. Oh, somewhere over the rainbow. This is in another trailer, wasn't it? How many of these things are there? Whew. Seventeen. Earth is fucked. That's messed up. No bit. Mothra. Rodan. I love Mothra. Kidora. Oh my. They're moving like a pack. They're hunting. They all respond directly to an alpha. Hmm. We stop this Ghidorah. We stop them all. Is there another ah. creature that might stand a chance against him? Oh. My God, Zilla! Zilla! Ah, oh, yeah. Our planet will perish, and so will we. We set Godzilla free. Damn. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's bring him in for a beer. No, this time we join hey, the fight. Hey, that's what I was. Run. Oh. in this world we just live in it damn right hell yeah okay all right i can see why people were uh enjoying that trailer um i mean that's a hell of a trailer there's a lot of action going on there there's a lot to break down there too um fuck i it's funny when I was when I was young, like really young, I hated old movies. It was this thing I can't kind of had, and I think a lot of kids go through it where anything, especially like black and white and stuff like that. I was like, mm, I don't want it. And then for some reason, I don't know what started it. It was after the the really crappy American Godzilla film, but I really got into watching the old Godzilla movies. Super into it, and I love a lot of those old films, and it's really fucking awesome because there is so much of them here. Um, okay, so one thing I want to break down straight up is there's a lot of monsters, but the only ones that are that appear from this, and from what I understand, that are original from the old films are Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Rodan, Mothra. And there's four of them. There's 17 according to this film. And I think that's because... Partly, I think there's a rights issue, and also you don't want to introduce too many, like... There are fan-favorite characters. And this, this all sort of ties into the same thing of this idea of there being fan-favorite characters. You don't want to do too much with those in a film like this, because I feel like they're going to want to show a lot of monsters dying in different ways. So you don't want to bring in a fan-favorite and then have them get killed off. Because then you'll piss people off. You're better off making up a new thing and having that die, and then people are going to be like, yeah, we're an animal and all that. Like, they can still like the ones they like. The only issue is that they haven't so far been great at designing their own creatures. I think the, the things on Skull Island, I forget the name of, they were probably the best in design-wise. But even that's still kind of bland. It's not the most interesting thing. I don't know. Part of it, I think, is just the way they designed them for costumes back in the day makes them look more interesting than trying to... Trying to do it now, you don't have that restriction, so it makes it actually harder to come up with something very unique and, like, interesting to look at. Um, and then, yeah, clearly from this, that they respond to an alpha. Uh, so they're really going hard. I don't remember if the old films really pushed on the king of the monsters outside of whoever became the king of the monsters was like i'm showing i'm the boss and they all 
have their own personalities to the point that they were like, oh, I guess I follow you, or some were still like, meh. Where this is like, pretty much they respond to it. Like, they're really stating it. And so King Ghidorah is clearly that alpha to begin with. And then they're all sort of following King Ghidorah. But then we saw a lot of Mothra and Rodan fighting Ghidorah in this. So obviously once Godzilla turns up, it sort of turns things. Godzilla becomes the alpha, so they all turn on Ghidorah. Even if Ghidorah is more powerful from the look of it, because they're all fighting Ghidorah. And clearly Ghidorah is a massive threat. So there must be something there to make it so that it isn't just power that we're talking about. It is something else. Um, which is interesting. And I mean... There's a lot here with, like, I mean, the humans are like, we're going to fight alongside Godzilla. Because you got to have the human characters. Even though this trailer shows a lot more, there goes my headphones, a lot more action and monster fights and stuff like that. They're going to have that human element in part to get some people to watch it. I do think a human element is often important in these sort of, like, in films. Um, just to have a connecting point. And, I mean, it's also to make executives feel safe. They don't They don't feel that people would go see a movie just about monsters beating the crap out of each other for two hours or whatever. They would rather have something that they can bank on, actors and stuff like that. Um, and I realized the other movie that I'm pretty sure had Somewhere Over the Rainbow was... Um, uh, I did a reaction to it. It was uh, Scary Tales to Tell in the Dark, or Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Oh, I can't remember which one it is. It was, I'm pretty sure it was that trailer. Had uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow play. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, like, this is a world that... It, my biggest issue with this series, com especially compared to the old stuff, is they're trying to do a realistic version of this. So they're trying to keep some real stakes, some real thing... The old ones were just kind of like, yeah, big monster shows up, beats up buildings. Even though people were like, oh my god, Godzilla. It's still just, there was sort of this acceptance of the ludicrous. We hear they're trying to downplay that and make a more real world. The problem with that is, when you have 17 giant ass monsters all pop up, start wrecking shit. Realistically, that world is gone. There's no way that human civilization survives... And without a nice city for Godzilla or whoever to just rock up and destroy, what is this franchise? What is this franchise when they want to do more? Because we know there's at least Godzilla vs. King Kong and probably more after this. What happens to a franchise without that? Or this particular franchise without that? I think not necessarily a concern of mine as much as a concern on behalf of them for this franchise. They could end, stop making these movies, and as much as I love all Godzilla, I, I didn't. I actually liked the 2014 Godzilla. I actually like a lot of like. I liked King Kong Skull Island. I didn't think they were amazing films, but I enjoyed them. But I still have no stakes in these films being made. If they suddenly went, no, we're not doing them anymore, I'd be like, cool, that's fine, whatever. Um, let's just move on to something else. But while they make them, I'll go see them. So I don't know, like. I have a concern of how they're going to handle the world of these films. If they intend to do a franchise in this manner, how is the world going to work? Because aren't you just going to end up with all the humans living in, like, bunkers and shit at a point? Because even if Godzilla keeps them under control, how do you know? Like, I assume there's going to be things of, like, Godzilla actually trusts us, even though we fought the fuck out of him last time until... We realized the bugs were the bigger problem. But then he got trapped or something? I don't know. I'm very, I am very—I can't remember the last one well enough. But it, they're like, we got to release Godzilla. Where the fuck is Godzilla? Like, did something happen to him? Is that happening in this movie? I'm not sure. So, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see where it goes. I'm not the most excited. This was a pretty good action trailer. I also don't think this trailer is completely accurate for the movie. Um, but... That may be good, that may be bad. I don't know yet. Um, but I'll be going to see it, so that's the main thing. But yeah, like, uh, leave a comment and let me know if you're going to go see this film. Um, if you have any interest in, in this franchise, or what you think they could do to keep this franchise interesting, given the more realistic stakes they keep trying to inject into it, what they could do on your in your thoughts. And uh, leave a like if you like this video and stuff like that. And uh, I will say now, this week's going to be a little weird for me. I've been really busy over the weekend, so I wasn't able to get stuff prepped like I'd like, which was why there was uh, 
Uh, there was no video one day. Oh, today. I completely forgot I didn't have a video today. So there was no video today, which is Monday. Um, so I'm going to try and make up with it with extra videos. Most of this week, I think, since there's not a lot out, especially stuff that makes sense for me to do, uh, is going to be all catching up on some trailers that came out last week that I missed. Or over the weekend, because I was so busy. There was a bunch of stuff dropped, so I'm going to try and catch up on some of that. I might even try and do something different, find something that's not necessarily a movie trailer, and react to that. Um, I'm also thinking... It'd be weird. I'm thinking of trying to do a thing talking about Game of Thrones, even though I have not watched any of the new season yet, but we'll we'll see how that goes. It'd be weird. I know a lot of the spoilers already, so I don't know. Um, but anyway... Thanks for watching, guys. That's what you got to kind of look forward to this week. And I will see you in the next video. By an army of mercenaries. Led by a genetically enhanced soldier. Look at me. I'm Black Superman. Ah. You're crazy. Oh, yeah. The Hydra Silver is so good. Damn. He really is Black Superman. <laughs>